What's up, homie G's? Welcome back to the channel. So uh, two quick orders of business here, and then I've got it. I need your insight on the comments on this video because this is this is a problem I'm really trying to solve, and I think it's I think it's like the top top problem in my area to be solving. So uh, one, if you've got a lawn and landscape business that you might consider selling, send me an email, travitonsitetrav.com. Um, I'm gonna be doing a Zoom meeting once a month for guys that have lawn, uh, lawn and landscape businesses that are interested in liquidating those businesses at some point. And I'll be sharing you know, how to value them, how to sell them, how to find buyers, etc. cetera. Uh, item two, I have built and sold five lawn and landscape businesses previously. That's how I got into Bobcats, that's how I got into land clearing, and then that kind of led into what I want to really expand into, which would be like creating food forests and then land development. Like I really want to build, uh, I really would love to start building neighborhood stuff, but not neighborhoods that suck, like really thoughtful, like neat off-grid type of neighborhoods. So fly-in community, like all that stuff really interests me. Um, and so at some point in time, I will be building up the tree company that I'm building now and I'll be selling it. This is a second tree company that I've built. Um, so this one at some point will be for sale. That's why, you know, like basically, I mean, the big thing I'm doing is the business is the product. So if you were like, yo, I would love to be in, in Sarasota, Florida, I would love to buy that thing. Um, maybe you can't afford it or you're like, I don't know if I could buy it. I will make it available uh, to own or finance it to the right individual. So if you're like, yeah, you know, maybe, you know, uh, that might be for me. We'd like you to come work for us. We'd like to, 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 to evaluate you at that point in time and see if that is something. Uh, probably own it for at least another year, potentially three years, could be longer, probably won't be more than five. Um, but at some point in time, I'm looking to move on to the second part of this video, which is I really, I really want to solve the recycling equation of nutrients. So what we do when we go out tree, like tree trimming, removal, all that stuff is we're basically harvesting those nutrients. We're bringing them back to property that we own. We're composting it. We're using it in, in the uh, raising of livestock. We're using it in the raising of permaculture. And uh, and and we live in Florida, so there's there's we don't have soil here. Like we have we have we have sand. We have some black sand. Like real thin layer of topsoil but it's not it's literally if you were to dry it out on a paper plate it's sand um, and so I have always thought for a long time that what we need to be doing is is harvesting these resources from properties and then composting them and then top dressing all of these lawns like this one I'm driving by right here it's a new neighborhood literally they dug this lake right here so they dug that lake pond thing and uh, they throw the fill dirt, and I'm talking fill dirt from 50 feet deep. They throw the fill dirt down, they build the house out, and then they put the sod and everything else on top. And then a year later, they, they pay all these chemical fertilizer companies to come in and keep it green, and it never really works. And it's only a matter of time before it gets a chinch bug or some sort of, or some sort of disease, some sort of fungus. And then people just chase it with chemicals. And then about every two years now, when I was a kid, it only happened one time. I think I was 14 at the time it happened. We had red tide and they say it's naturally occurring. And it's not naturally occurring. Um, but basically all of this green fake lawns that we have, all of it runs off down into the drainage ditches into the bay. And then we have these algae blooms and these algae blooms occur because of excess nitrates and so the algae becomes very successful and actually sucks all the oxygen out of the water which kills the fish and then a bunch of dead fish suck more oxygen out of the water which exacerbates the problem and then eventually maybe a month later with cooler water temperatures uh, it will dissipate and it's just disgusting I mean it's just it's really really harmful and it all comes from the green industry the lawn and landscape industry and I've always wanted to be on the dump recycling side of it and uh, we found a few pieces of land that would work well to have a to have drop-off points. I've actually thought about doing a bunch of decentralized drop-off points. I've talked to some guys here locally, a couple of tree guys that moved down from Pennsylvania that started a tree outlet down here, and they they were like, "Trav, in my area in Pennsylvania, it, everyone has a chipper, and it's really inexpensive to drop chips. Most of the time it's free, but in that particular area, it was." It, 
marginal cost, like $30 to drop a load of chips, but like $200 to drop a load of slash or just, you know, regular logs. And uh, so it really incentivized almost every tree company in that area to be into the chip game. And then they compost it and actually goes to large industrial farm, farm use up that way. Down here, we don't have anything like that going on. And so I've always wanted to get into that. Also, when you sell a business like that, uh, the multiples are nice. Like they, in my opinion, it's like the very top of the industry as far as all of these resources are being cut by lawn and landscape tree guys, landscaper guys. They're all consolidating in one area and that the real value is in those chips. However, the market disagrees with me. And so at present, there is no market for chips. You've got, if you want to take it down the production chip like line and you want to start adding value to it, you can get it, you can compost it over several years and you can add, you know, sell it for more comp like higher value compost. It's not popular for people to use compost down here. Uh, they should be, I think that they should be top dressing lawns and getting rid of chemical fertilizers, but it's just not a thing that anyone's doing. And so I've tried to, to, to really crack this nut and, um, and just with our own compact co composting operations where we're about to use pig turners. So this is a Joel Salatin concept where you basically build mobile pens. You put the chips in there, you put the pigs in there, pigs turn it, they enrich it with manure, and then you move them onto a new section. And then you, you run it through a screener and bam, there's your compost without tractors, without diesel fuel, and it's enriched. So it's, you know, it's got nitrates in there that, that doesn't have, didn't, wouldn't have had other ones, you know, with regular tractors and diesel fuel. And so I really would like to get into that at some point in time. Obviously I'd have to exit from my current operations, which would be a year or three or so from here. Um, but, but the challenge is, is in finding that market, that end user for the chips. Now in my mind, I want as many chips as I could possibly have because Florida has no soil, has no organics. Fertilizer to me is something that will, will increase in costs uh, well outpacing inflation for the foreseeable future. It's already 4X since 2022. So the cost of fertilizer has increased fourfold. Um, if it doubles one more time, I mean, you're, it really starts to get to a spot where it's like, well, um, compost is starting to become an actual viable option. Also, it's the correct option. It's the right thing to do. It's it's like the if if people spent 20 years paying for a lawn service that came and top dressed their lawn, there'd be a point after year 15 or 10, maybe 20, where like they're done. There's no more things to do here. It's just gonna. It has natural biology. It has worms. It has organics. It's just gonna maintain itself from here. As opposed to you're just throwing on some radiation chemical to it, it kills the soil and every single quarter you have to apply apply more because like you don't have any organics in the soil, you're basically just killing them and just you're just frying out the worms, you're just, you're destroying it. And so I know long term it's the right it's the right move. I also know that there's no market for it, which is what I want to hear from you guys in the comments. There's there's when I go out to some of these waste facilities now that I'm I'm kind of courting and I'm looking at them and I'm going like all right they've got fields that they just pile these chips on and they don't do anything with it and so I may be able to start this operation by just going to these guys that are already grinding this material already have this chips and getting these chips the catch to it is it's a delayed cash flow like with our chips at our homestead here we were probably we're four or five years in, we're starting to get results, but the, the real results are yet to come. And so in my mind, I've thought through this idea and I've, 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 call, I've, I've thought through this concept of trees to food, where it's like, I wanna grow food, I wanna grow organic, like local things that are healthy, that are not full of soy and seed oils and things that are literally killing the American public, but they just don't know or don't care. Uh, and I'd like to do it in a local manner. And the only way to do it here in the state of Florida is you need an ungodly amount of chips. I mean, you need thousands of yards of chips to really make this happen. And I haven't been able to figure out, like you can charge someone as they come into the recycling center to drop waste, to drop slash, to braid. You can grind it and you can compost it and you can turn it into colored mulch, which is kind of not great. Like you're putting dye in it. You can turn it into compost, which is good. You know, and then the landscapers theoretically will, will pick that up as, as it goes. Um, but the real win would be never selling those chips. Like the real win would be buying a bunch of 10, 20 acre spots, 
moving those chips or just grinding on site to those locations. So getting the tree guys to bring the mass, the carbon, bring the mass and then move a mobile grinder, grind it, put it out. And when I say put it out, I'm talking like six feet, eight feet tall. And it breaks down here uh, four to one, basically, or one to four. So four feet of mulch will become one foot of, of soil. And uh, so if you had eight feet out there, you'd get two feet of topsoil. If you have two feet of topsoil, you can grow anything indefinitely. You put some, some activated charcoal in there, you can forget about fertilizer for the rest of your life and your grandkids' life, because it's, it's done, it's over. And so I would like to do that. I think that the, the business model would be own these dump facilities, these recycling facilities, but then more or less become more of a real estate holding company where you own these assets, these permaculture assets, these farms, these little decentralized farms everywhere, and you and you just retain all the chips. As time progresses 10, 15 years down the road, it should lend itself to a situation where one, you have all this yield, you have all this cash flow that's gonna indefinitely just continue to come. I mean, once you planted a thousand mango trees on something, they're just gonna keep coming. At a dollar, dollar fifty a mango, you're good. Like you, it's just going to, and you have, you don't have the inputs that you otherwise would be with chemical fertilizer. Also, the value of that real estate is unique. So, if you do get, say, an organic food brand that comes in there, and they, you know, whatever organic food brand Inc., and they want access to a thousand acres of near perfect soil with ten years of permaculture on top of it. It's an interesting conversation because it's land value plus soil value plus yield. And so it becomes a way to invest in agriculture, but yet have cash flows directly through the debris drop off. But the real long-term cash flows would be selling the debris, the debris block off and drop off at some point in time. Because what happens here is they all get bought up. Like we've had, uh, I know one guy who's had two facilities and he sold them both to a larger company, like a uh, waste management or newest ones from Texas. They're like a big, you know, owned by a private equity company. And, uh, and like the first one he sold for 64 million. The second one, he, his brother, who's a client of ours said he did better on, but he didn't give me the number. So, you know, 64 million on his first outlet. It, it was a 20 acre property, pretty good location. Um, sold for 60, 64 mil, just a literal recycling operation. We don't have a lot of recycling operations here. And they, when the ones that we do are very spaced out, you know, 20, 30 miles apart. So as a, as a tree contractor, if you're looking to drop debris, it's not convenient. Like it's, and it's expensive. It's like for our Zuzu, it's like 200, $250 to drop something like that. And to which, you know, it's 20 yard truck, 15 yard truck. They grind it down into four yards. It ultimately, you know, four or five yards if you were to grind out a pile of slash like that. And it's gonna ultimately end up being a, you know, a yard of compost, two yards of compost per truck. And so, um, so I've been thinking through this idea and I've been thinking through the cash flows of it and how to start it. And it seems like the dump and the recycling part of it, okay, that's relatively straightforward, but what to do with the chips when the market doesn't value them at all? Now, at some point in time, I think everyone is gonna be like, oh, dude, we need to do no-till growing. Like, we need to grab these chips. Like, these chips are worth everything. Florida has no topsoil and we need to grow more. I think that's gonna be a combination of crazy worldwide events, rapid inflation, um, the soil degradation that's already occurred because we've been literally poisoning the soil since like the late 50s. Um, you've heard of the Dust Bowl maybe from the 1930s, basically almost the same repeating cycle where we had beautiful American topsoil and then we stripped it. And then in the 30s, it came to hit us in the face with the Dust Bowls. And then in the 50s, we basically figure out chemical ag kind of through World War II earlier, figure out chemical ag, and then we just rock chemical ag on our dust soil and then you know fast forward to 2024 you've got a nation full of fake and gay people and everyone's like why is the testosterone levels of the average american male so damn low and it's like well to start with you don't have topsoil in this country like you, you don't i think that the like the thing to be investing in for like a 20 year window right right now probably topsoil i mean it's it's pretty evident to me that every empire does this they you look at the, the pyramids 
there are these like beautiful buildings in the middle of a desert and you're like who would build a building that takes 80 years to complete in the middle of a desert like you're talking about you know a 10 billion dollar construction project are you gonna just put it in the middle of nowhere uh you know desert like no you're gonna put that in something that looks like the garden of eden that's lush fertile on the banks of the nile but then over time they strip their topsoil and the rest is history i mean you look at this in the middle east you want to look at like three thousand years of just absolute topsoil degradation that i mean point in case right there so to me it's like restoring the topsoil is a big deal there's probably additional cash flows you can get on it through carbon credits and through land mitigation credits there's probably a lot of like fake funny money like uh fiat fiat type of things fiat scams that you could give access to your shareholders but one of the things i want to hear from you guys on is like all right well what do you do with these piles of chips that are super super useful but not valued by the market and I think the answer would be like never sell them just hoard them find pieces of land so this becomes like a, this becomes an equity funding question because you're you're always for a period of time you're always going to need additional equity holders to buy to buy in to the company and then utilize their equity to take chips and put it out on land, improving that land and then planting it with permaculture. That permaculture will eventually start to yield for you. Here's our pile of chips over this way. I'll pull this camera out. Pile of chips over that way. That permaculture will eventually start to yield for you. And as it does, uh, you're gonna get this continual cash flow and you're only gonna ride the benefits of inflation. But you've gotta cash flow this operation long enough to be able to do that. But if you're able to do that, then you're in a situation where you hoarded chips for seven, 10, 15 years. It's broken down into perfect soil. It's now producing yields and you have a moat around the business where like anyone who wants to compete with you, like they can't, that you're so far ahead there's nothing they can do. So if a company like Whole Foods comes in and says, hey, look, we're concerned about GMOs, we're concerned about like Roundup, we're concerned about all these things, we wanna create a super high-end bougie level product that people like just very, very high-end expensive product for whatever health food, um, where can we do it at? It's like mm, the dump facility, it owns the only land subsidiaries that you could potentially even look at. There's nothing else to look at. And you have to go to like Colombia or you know somewhere else that has more you know has better fertile for, fertile soil and hasn't like destroyed it and that's that's getting harder and harder to find. So I want to hear from you guys in the comments what your thoughts are on that and uh, you know if, if this is an interesting subject to some maybe we'll do additional videos on it because it's certainly top of my mind and things that I'm working on when I'm working my three year you know one year three year plan. So see ya.